You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. The question is, is immunotherapy better than chemotherapy? It can be, yeah. In, in many cancers, definitely. Yeah. Okay. In cancers that you don't have the molecular markers for, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work at all. Right. And, ah, yes, back to... Back to the genetics. Right. The features. Yes, if you don't know, that's the thing. <laughs> Pardon me. And we are seeing that sometimes, aren't we? That oncologists with very good intention trying to arrange for their patients to be on the leading edge treatments mm -hmm. are prescribing immunotherapies when patients don't have the markers. Exactly. And then, you know, it's understandably it's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and then, unfortunately, that has some big downsides. Yeah. Um, I do have a note on that. I mean, I, I think personally, and, and, you know, there's many other medical professionals that agree with this. Uh, I think that everyone should get immunotherapy. Mm. It's like buying a lottery ticket. Mm. You can't win if you don't buy the ticket, mm. even though your chances may not be, be good. Mm. Um, we don't know enough about it to say that you're not going to respond. Mm. So, um, and then also for some reason, the PD-1 inhibitors, they seem to uh, reset the cancer in some way. Hmm. I mean, we know that PD-1 is involved with cancers, pretty well all cancers. Um, it's going to occur um, in different path or different times of the disease mm -hmm. and different locations and at different tumors at different times and mm -hmm. so on. And that's why it's hard to predict, you know, how it's working. But what we've seen is, is even when patients don't respond to PD-1 inhibitors, they get no response whatsoever. What we do see is in a lot of cases, those patients start responding to subsequent chemotherapy protocols mm. afterwards. Ah, hence the reset Exactly. Concept. It tends, you know, so drugs Somehow. that the patients have become resistant to, mm. you know, they do a couple shots of PD-1 inhibitors, and then all of a sudden they're responding to that drug mm. again for another year. Mm. And we do see that quite a bit. Mm. So mm. I think that all patients should get a couple shots of PD-1 inhibitors, mm. even if they don't have the indications for mm. it. So that would be why some oncologists are prescribing it, even if their patients didn't test positive for PD-1 or something. Like well, that. I would like to think that, <laughs> but I think that phenomenon is not as well known. Okay. So right. I think um, I think in most cases where they're getting prescribed is just misguided information. Okay, which happens to have a silver lining for people it does, potentially, yes, right, yes. to make their their, exactly. uh, their treatments more beneficial, even if they don't have that. Exactly. Mm. It's just a little more difficult convincing a doctor to put a patient on a drug. Um, they were previously resistant to. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the problem. Right. That's but that's where you and your team come in, right? right? Is that so? You know, that's a, a, yeah. what Alex and his team spend a lot of their day doing is preparing papers yeah. um, for their clients, uh, so that uh, the the oncologist that they're working with has the confidence, mm -hmm. not all the information they need to either keep them on a treatment mm -hmm. or modify their treatment plan. Right. Yeah, because right. all that information is out there. You just have to know how to look for it and put it all together exactly. in a way that convinces your doctor. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.